Hi everybody, it's Matt here, your local friendly neighbourhood vestibular migraine sufferer. So coming back in with a video today, which hopefully will interest both newcomers to the channel and um, old pros who've um, looked at my channel for a long time. So those of you who have looked at my channel or followed my channel for a while will know that every once in a while, maybe once a year, once every 18 months, I like to kind of do a, I guess, a stock check type video, which kind of considers all the possible reasons or causes for a vestibular migraine, vestibular disorder or vestibular episode. So my theory or hypothesis about what the causes are has changed over time. So as I've got to know more people or speak to different sufferers, there's been you know new um, roads opening up in terms of possible causes, new theories to explore. So I think it makes sense to put them all into a single video you know, once every 18 months or so. So this is kind of the latest video then in my kind of theory of everything as to my hypothesis, my view as to what is causing vestibular migraine, vestibular disorder or vestibular illness. So those who are new to the channel, welcome. Hopefully you'll find this useful and it has the most up-to-date theory in it. And those of you who are revisiting the channel, welcome back. And if you are the latter, um, you will know that... Um, in the past, I have talked about my kind of theory that vestibular migraine or essentially vestibular symptoms that are being attributed to, attributed to vestibular migraine might not necessarily be anything to do with the vestibular system. So the reason why that I have put forward that hypothesis is because pretty much everyone I've spoken to who does not have a head injury or some kind of injury to the vestibular system so putting them to one side, people who've not got injury or damage to the vestibular system, when they have their MRI scan on the vestibular nerves and the vestibular system, when they are feeling poorly with vestibular symptoms, pretty much 10 times out of 10, it shows no injury or inflammation or damage to the vestibular system or nerves. So that kind of led me down a road to think, well, if there's no physical effect on the vestibular system, then perhaps the vestibular system is not really the cause or the root cause of our problems. Maybe something else is going off in our body that gives us symptoms as if we had some kind of um, upset or damage to our vestibular system. So I have said before, and I still think this to this day, that it's possibly not anything to do with the vestibular system at all, and it might be some kind of um, damage or illness of our central nervous system. And I'm not saying that, you know, as anything to worry about. It's... It, it's not something that's going to kill us or, or make us drop dead. I think it's probably something that, well, hopefully, fingers crossed, science will get to the bottom of eventually. And the effect on the central nervous system could could have been caused by anything, really. But I, my, my kind of gut instinct is probably inflammation, which I'm going to come on to in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over to a couple of slides. So the first slide has got basically a gingerbread man on it. And I'll talk through um, what some of the main causes probably are a vestibular migraine or could be, probably could be, um, likely could be causes. And then the second slide is basically a sort of table that's meant to be like a graph, which shows you that I think, in my opinion, everybody has a th who suffers from vestibular disorder, everybody has a threshold. And I think we have to hit that threshold before we then get an attack of symptoms and then go into a, either short term episode or a chronic episode. So, so to do that, I think the combination will be the combination of underlying conditions or causes, which we'll show you on the gingerbread man, plus then external factors, which I will show you on the graph that come together to push us over a threshold. So we then have an, an attack and have vestibular symptoms. So I hope that makes sense. It should make more sense as well once I go to the little diagram. So starting off, as I said, with the gingerbread man. So clicking over now. So as you can see, our gingerbread man friend is is with us on screen. Um, I probably should have used a gingerbread woman, to be honest, because um, of something specific I'm going to speak about in a minute, which is around hormones. But anyway, uh, we are where we are. But I thought he looked like a friendly gingerbread chap. So nice on a gloomy rainy day in March so as you can see in here in the black boxes I've listed some of the things that I think are quite likely to be 
potential causes of vestibular migraine. But of course, these are things that are underlying kind of conditions that a vestibular migraine sufferer will have one or more of. And then the final kind of then spark that ignites an illness is then external factors that combine with these underlying symptoms to then cause an attack. So quickly going around then our gingerbread man friend. So one of the things that came apparent to me when I finally got diagnosed was that to be in a position where I would suffer from a vestibular migraine probably would be some either personal history of regular migraine or family history of regular migraine. And lo and behold, um, I already knew this anyway at the time, but my dad was, has, or is, was a sufferer of, of, let me start again, was a sufferer of regular migraine, but he gets them a lot less now. He's an older man, but he obviously was a sufferer. And then I have a twin brother. And when he was a, um, a boy at secondary school, he suffered from regular migraine. So it's in my DNA, this family history of migraine. Um, so probably some sufferers, one of the kind of building blocks, unfortunately, to getting vested with a migraine is that you have family history of migraine or indeed you have suffered from regular migraine. And then moving to the middle there, we've got the central nervous system. So as I've already touched on that already is my hypothesis is that what deep down is going on here is there's something wrong with the the central nervous system that gives us vestibular symptoms or symptoms which might indicate there's something wrong with our vestibular system. But it could also be then the central nervous system is upsetting the vestibular system. It's just something that doesn't show up on, on a scan or no test can really be done to, to, to pinpoint that that's what's going on. So central nervous system issue it wouldn't at all surprise me if that was one of the root causes of what's wrong with us. And then uh, linked to that, the other side of the gingerbread man now on the right hand side is inflammation. So something that can disrupt the central nervous system is inflammation. So in my case, I'm a long time sufferer of IBS, a fantastic um, condition to have. Um, I feel so grateful for having that condition. But anyway, that causes inflammation. It's caused by inflammation. It's a vicious circle of information. So if you have some form of information like IBS in my book, it's probably no surprise that that might cause some kind of disturbance to the central nervous system or indeed the vestibular system. So I would get that down there as a probable cause uh, linked to inflammation, um, but not not kind of directly, but I guess it probably can cause inflammation at certain times of of the, the month or the year is hormone changes. So hormones for me is something that became apparent the more I spoke to different people through um through my videos, so in the comments or if I got to know them personally. And I'm afraid unfortunately for all the lovely girls out there, unfortunately hormones seems to be a big player for women who suffer from vestibular migraine. So what became apparent is that the symptoms would occur or an episode would occur, for example, during the menstrual cycle or at times of hormone change. Um, some cases, some women, for, for example, when they got pregnant. So hormones clearly play an issue and particularly, unfortunately, with women. So it must be, for example, that maybe there's something in estrogen that then causes some kind of inflammation or causes something, some reaction in the body that can then manifest or result in vestibular type symptoms. Um, I think as well, it's it's no coincidence, is it, that the disease or the illness, I should say, uh, many years ago was known as floating women's disease and floating because they felt like derealization or dizziness. And it was nicknamed that. And it's no surprise it was given a, a name that has women in it because unfortunately, in, in the majority of sufferers are women, unfortunately. And, I, and, I, and my theory is that the reason that the majority of sufferers are women is because of female hormones, estrogen, etc., etc. So if it's a particular like time of month, then some women are probably much more likely to have vestibular symptoms than if it was not the time of the month. And of course... I think there has been some quite a lot of research to link regular migraine to hormones, uh, particularly in women. So 
Then moving up, we've got a couple of weirder ones on here. So I've got piercings. So I've done a video on this a few years ago, but I think there is some research to suggest piercings and things like piercings, which are external things that go into your body. <laughs> so piercings is an obvious one, can cause problems for the body. They can cause obviously inflammation, but who knows, maybe as well, the body kind of doesn't really like something foreign being in it. But anyway, if we link it in with the information, it makes sense then that that could cause information that could then lead to some kind of vestibular symptoms. And equally, teeth are on here because I've done a video on that before as well, that fillings or bad teeth or combination of both could cause vestibular distress of some sort. So if you think about it, the teeth are really quite close to the vestibular system or the, the ears in particular. And if you get trouble with them, that can spread, you know, it is known that bad teeth was could cause deaths in the olden days. It could lead to all sorts of problems in the body that then kill people. So it's logical to think that even in this modern era, if you've got a dodgy tooth or a filling that's not behaving right, or the metal in the filling, for example, causes problems in your body, like inflammation. Again, I keep coming back to that one. It's a key word, isn't it? A key thing, but it makes sense then that that could disturb the vestibular symptom or give you sort of vestibular system or give you vestibular symptoms. So I remember when I went to see a Cairo, he was a really knowledgeable guy and he did, he sort of did a few tests on a tooth. He did put gloves on. He didn't just slam his, his hand in me, in my mouth, but he put gloves on and pressing on a certain tooth, which wasn't causing me any problems, but I did know it was an older filling. When he did that, I couldn't do the regular sort of push away Cairo type things when he was pushing it, which suggested it was having some kind of impact on my body in some way. So his recommendation was to, if you have metal fillings and certainly older metal based fillings to get them replaced with, I can't remember what he recommended now. Fortunately, the filling, the tooth and filling he was pushing on with me did get replaced a few years after that. Um, so I remember I didn't say anything, but I was quite sort of secretly a little bit relieved deep down when they said they were going to replace that filling because I thought, oh, well, okay, hopefully that then rules out and gets rid of any potential for that tooth to have been causing my vestibular issues. So teeth and piercings, a bit of a strange one, a bit left field, but there is some research to suggest they could cause vestibular migraine or vestibular disorder type problems. Uh, perhaps a more obvious one on here, which has come to the fore in more recent years, is neck problems or stiff neck or again, inflammation in the neck. So uh, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because the neck is really close to the vestibular system. So I, I, I don't think this one's crackpot. And I think it's probably, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a cause for, let's say, 20% of people who've got vestibular issues. So quite a few people I've spoken to down the years who are vestibular sufferers um, have mentioned they've got neck issues. I have had neck issues. I, I kind of, to this day, still have a stiff neck and try and do exercises for it and, and that kind of thing. It's quite a common problem in the modern era, always looking at bloody phones or um, looking at your computer, sat in desk work all day. Um, so it's it's no surprise, is it, um, that it's the necks, modern people's necks are not doing so well, let's just, let's say that. And within the neck, of course, there's, there's, there's a number, the, the trapezius muscle comes all the way up the back of your head. You've got the, is it stemming your mastoid muscles, the ones that come down in front of your neck, below your throat, um, those big muscles that control the movement of your, of your head. So obviously if they are in poor posture, they're going to get upset, tense, um, tight, um, sore. And there's going to be, again, the buzzword inflammation probably going off in there as well. So it, it's no surprise that that perhaps could be obstructive to the functioning of the vestibular system without actually causing any obvious damage or disturbance to the vestibular system that would show up on the scan. So neck, I think, is, is a crucial one and something that, you, that if you are do have symptoms and you, you realise, oh, actually, my neck isn't great, something to explore to get sorted, some physio, chiro, whatever it may be. Um, so neck is on there. And then we're coming to the end now of my main sort of list here on the gingerbread man. So virus or an injury. So when I first had a vestibular episode, it was never actually diagnosed, but they speculated it could have been triggered by a virus or kind of like a long-term effect of a virus. And I'd have spoke to a number of people who got vestibular symptoms after being poorly with something. 
Um, a common one is labyrinthitis because that does actually disrupt the vestibular system. Um, so virus, I think, certainly can be uh, an underlying, a key underlying cause to why we then go on to get vestibular disorder or symptoms or illness. Then I've said their injury as well. So an obvious one, isn't it? If you have suf unfortunately suffer a head injury, then of course that could disrupt the vestibular system. And that's one where you might see evidence for that on a scan or something like that. And then the final one at the top there, which is one, this is this is something that, um, without swearing, can piss me off majorly because what lots of people do, doctors and professionals do as well, doctors do is, they will just say that all the symptoms of vestibular disorder is just stress, a manifestation of stress, which was something that was thrown at me loads of times when I had it really badly. But it really annoys me because what we've got here is a physical condition that manifests itself in anxiety and stress because partly because if it is the vestibular system that's being affected, the vestibular system is so interlinked with the mood system that you can't up you can't upset the vestibular system without having then uh, mood and anxiety trouble because they're so interlinked. So for me, you cannot just summarise all of this illness as just being a manifestation of stress and anxiety. It's something physical that's causing then stress and anxiety. And it so made me, it used to make me annoyed when people would just dismiss what was wrong with me as stress and anxiety, particularly because when I got particularly the second episode, I was not stressed at all. I was in a good place. My football club was almost promoted to the Premier League, so I was not stressed at all. So I knew I knew at the back of my mind and deep down that when people were dismissing it as stress, I knew it wasn't. And then by the second episode, a few other things had happened to me to make me realise, no, this is not stress. There's something more going on here. And I was proved right, ultimately, and, and you will be as well if you're facing that same um, prejudice or taboo. But... The reason why stress is on here, though, is although I don't think stress is the cause of or stress is not generating vestibular symptoms, I do acknowledge that stress can be something that can maybe be the final trigger to give you a vestibular episode or it certainly can act like petrol being thrown onto a fire and it can certainly, in definitely happened in my case, it exacerbates the symptoms you have and makes them worse and then... When you're anxious, you then dwell on the symptoms and all that kind of thing. It's a toxic mix. So that's why I've included stress and anxiety on there as an underlying thing. But for me, it's not It's not the symptoms we're experiencing are not the manifestation of stress and anxiety. It's the other way around. Stress and anxiety is a symptom of the physical thing that's wrong with us, whether that be genuine disturbance to vestibular system, whether that be vestibular migraine or whether that be the bloody issue with the central nervous system, which I've already said is is one of my hypotheses. So then moving on from the gingerbread man, now say goodbye, gingerbread man. As I said, because I spoke about women, I probably should have made him a gingerbread woman, but there we go. It's the modern world after all, isn't it? So then moving on to this next slide, which is a red, amber, green kind of table thing that you can see there. So what I've tried to do here is sort of pretend that I'm in a, in a given week and pretend this is me basically the week where I got poorly. So this this could be my week. So what I've tried to do is illustrate here, or what this table's trying to do is illustrate that probably as vestibular disorder sufferers, we've got one or more of those kind of underlying conditions that I've just gone through with a gingerbread man. And most of the time we'll probably be fine vestibular wise, but there might be a certain day, time, week, part of the year, whatever it may be, where unfortunately, those underlying conditions are then we add to that external factors that, that then push us over a threshold. So you can see the black line there in the middle where it's a threshold. That That is the point that if we cross that, which we might cross that as because of a combination of underlying causes and external factors, we cross that, then we get poorly. So you can see that after that, that black line, everything's gone red. So we're pushed into a situation where we will get a vestibular attack. So the reason why the underlying causes listed there are green is because if we just have those and in, and, and we stay under the threshold, in my view, I don't think we'd get really poorly. But unfortunately, some people might have loads of underlying causes that keep them permanently over the threshold. Hope to God not. And hopefully some of those can get treated so you drop below the threshold. So 
imagine this is me then. So, I, so this is me before I got really poorly with vestibular migraine, let's say the week before. So at that point in time, I, I did have a bit of a dodgy neck because um, I'd done desk work for years. Um, I obviously had the migraine family history that's going to be with me for the rest of my life. It's in my DNA, unfortunately. And then information. So I've listed that down there as something I would have probably had going on all the time because I did suffer from IBS and I hadn't really looked into my diet then, which I have done now to try and minimize that information. So let's say my average day, I would probably have those three underlying causes going off. It might be you have more. Obviously, if you're a woman, you probably would be adding hormones in there at certain times of the month, etc. There could be heaps of, of underlying causes or it could indeed, you might have just one or two of them less than me. But then you can see as we progress through the week, everything's a okay as far as just the underlying things are there, but I'm not hit the threshold. But then, as you can see, when we get to Saturday, this is where, you know, we, we, hit, we hit the critical point because I've obviously got my regular underlying stuff. So my bad neck, migraine family history, always going to be there. Inflammation, always there. But then what, unfortunately, on Friday night, I had a late night. So an external factor that that is external to us really is if we stop up late. Um, and then as part of that late night, it was a late night drinking. So this is the day after a night where I went to bed real late and I was on the booze. Plus then you add to that, I've still got my bad neck. I've still got my migraine family history. So I'm a bit vulnerable to it. And then I've got information going off, which is as hopefully I'll highlight with the gingerbread man is a massive factor in causing vestibular issues. And unfortunately, the combination of those five things has taken me from a green situation to an amber a warning, warning, warning. But then unfortunately, I crossed the threshold on this Saturday because I then went to the football and I put myself in a situation where there was other external factors. So namely the bright floodlights that's shining on the pitch and the movement of the players and the ball, a lot of movement. And then, of course, the movement of people in the stand around me. So that is kind of the final straw here that pushes me over the threshold and means I get poorly. So you can see that the equal sign, then we move into vestibular episode. So hopefully that sets out actually that if you can actually stay beneath that threshold and tackle some of these things. So if you can get treatment for your bad neck and that gets a lot better, that's out of the equation. Then, then let's say that you, um, that you, um, Quit booze. I'm not saying you should. I still booze uh, on a Friday and sometimes on a Saturday. But let's say hypothetically we quit booze. That takes an external factor out of the equation that could cause us to hit our threshold. So the trick is to really try and keep below your threshold. And there's all of those things that are there. Even the underlying things can be treated to keep you below that threshold. So external factors I I've classed here. I'm not, I'm not. There's no lot, you know, real science to it. But I'm saying they're things that maybe are not necessarily something that goes on in your body they're things that are external to your body that can then if they mix with the underlying causes you can see the evil equation at the bottom there underlying causes plus external factors equals vestibular episode so external factors i've said are light obviously supermarkets uh photophobia known known common symptom with with um regular migraine but if you go into a situation where there's lots of light it can trigger symptoms Motion, which I've already mentioned, light and motion at the football, pff, no good for me. Alcohol, which is what I'd done the night before my attack. I'd been on the booze, then I went, had a late night, then I went into um situation with light and motion. Lack of sleep, as I said, because I had the late night. Stress, I've added in here as well, because, yeah, stress is kind of internal to the, to the person, isn't it? In terms of you feel stress inside you, but stress is also an external factor that, can be removed so let's say that you had a really important meeting at work but that meeting's over and gone then that stress has hopefully gone away so it can be an external factor so it's on there and the final one on there is weather which i have done a video on so i've noticed we've because we've got into march now we're at the cusp of moving from late winter into spring so the pressure changes in the is it, uh, barometric pressure and the light that comes with that are certainly things that can stir my symptoms up and um, uh, my one true vestibular love as well, uh, who I've known for a long time now and got to know through these videos, she also um, experiences 
symptoms at this time of year with the light and the change in pressure and I'm sure many of you do and i have done a video on that as well so look through my back catalog if you want to hear more on that uh, but again it's external and that's not inside as that's something external at court that that can once added to the stuff we've got going on inside us can cause you to go over the threshold and then get and have unfortunately a vestibular attack so hopefully those two diagrams make some sense the gingerbread man on the table so i'm just going to bring us back now to the camera so yeah hopefully that made some sense to everybody as i said i like to refresh that once in a while once i you know educate myself further or get new information to go on or new leads new uh, premises that support my hypotheses etc or indeed premises that challenge my or refute my hypothesis which is entirely fine it might be that all of that stuff i've just told you there i might be proven wrong in time it might be that science comes along and figures out that what was causing vestibular issues was um some hidden satellite on the moon that's firing at the earth or some aliens at the bottom of the garden that we just couldn't see for years that they're actually causing the symptoms who knows who knows what science will materialize but hopefully you found that useful um and if you're struggling with a relative loved one player etc maybe worth showing them this video if they're struggling to grasp it and hopefully that will um kind of um be enlightening for them about this bloody awful condition but anyway i've gone on long enough there uh, it's a long video but i knew it would be today because there's quite a lot to talk about but do check out my other videos some of the stuff we've covered there those videos go into in much more detail and um sorry i've been slower on the videos but it's getting to the point really guys where um i don't know I've, whether i've got that much more to keep offering to the, the kind of the 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 plate really what what more can i bring to the plate i know one person in particular has requested a sort of video in the gym but i don't think i'm going to be able to do that as i've said there is big signs in my gym saying please don't film because people don't want to be on camera and won't necessarily want to be on camera so i've got to be really careful with that don't want to get you know banged up for filming scantily clad women in the gym it's at least the last thing i need um so i will I, I do try and do a video when i've got new things to say but as i said i've done a lot of videos now i've covered a lot of subjects and unfortunately the science and the knowledge of vestibular stuff doesn't move on that quickly so um it basically doesn't get out of date that quickly unfortunately so i do try and keep doing the video but um maybe i'm coming to the end of my cycle of, of what i can do for sufferers but who who knows i'm not saying i'm going away or anything or this is i'm not saying this is my last video but um it's it you know it, i might be i've kind of reached my sell by date on this kind of stuff i don't know but anyway hopefully you found that one interesting and as i always say at the end of my videos just like with hormones now the body can change as you were you'll be again so take care everybody and i'll see you sometime soon